What's up? This is Behind the Barricade. We're sitting down with Makeshift from Massapequa, New York. What's up, guys? How we doing? Hey, hey, what's, what's going up? on? All right. So there's four of you guys. Why don't you go ahead and give me your names, introduce you know what you do in the band, and any little tidbits about yourself that you want to include for everyone to know. Um, my name is Matt, and I play drums for Makeshift, and I got shit on a bird yesterday at Disney World. <laughs> got shit on by a fucking bird at Disney World. A highlight of tour. Yeah. Uh, my name is Dan, I play bass and I sing in the band, and I worked a job for three years as the mascot at a roller skating rink. That, what was the mascot? <laughs> or I was called Skatosaurus Rex. The Skatosaurus so, Rex? Yeah, he's a big green dinosaur, he skates around, dances. You big hit with the kids? Uh, always. Absolutely. I'd ask for your autograph, that's great. <laughs> uh, I'm Andrew, I sing and play guitar for the band. And uh, I'm really not that interesting at all. That's not true. I think you're swell. <laughs> no, it's true. No, it's, it's pretty true. Oh, okay, never mind. Andrew fucking sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what's up? I'm Austin. I play lead guitar in Makeshift, and I really like Star Wars. Yesterday, we went to Disney, saw a lot of Star Wars stuff. It's the best day of my life. That's awesome. Yeah, you're wearing a Star Wars shirt right now, yes, I see. Sir. So you, do you usually go by Stin or Austin? I know everyone's calling Stin. It's whatever you're comfortable with. I, I feel like really you're the care. first person named Austin I've ever met that goes by Stin. I think I'm the only one. <laughs> like that's yeah, actually, that's really know. fucking me. Like, but like what? <laughs> there's not many <laughs> nicknames you can get out of Austin. Yeah, yeah you, know? really you can't go Aus. Like it's not. I, 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 what's up? I'm Aussie. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, Stin row. Yeah. So you guys got an album coming out on the 13th of January this month, coming up in a few days, uh, called Morale. Um, mm -hmm. Got produced by Adam from Gatherers. Yeah, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. right. How was how was working with him on that? It was a great time. Was, I really yeah. enjoyed the whole studio process. Yeah, he's yeah. a sweetheart. Honestly, Adam was doing some cool shit. I've never seen any other producer do. Just like the way he was tracking it and the way he helped us write the songs actually make the songs better. Yeah, his so. attitude about tracking was just like really positive. It really helped us make a good record as well. That's good. Yeah, and like. Uh, we went and we met with him in January before we went to, like, track, and we just, like, talked it out or whatever, and, um, yeah, his whole, you know, mindset about it was really awesome, and he's just a dude that wants to make awesome records with awesome bands, so we were stoked to have him as a part of the process. So was, uh, do you think, yeah, do you think having him in there with you guys, you know, made it a little different? Um, of a recording experience as your, you know, than your previous records? Yeah, 100%. I think it was also a very different environment because that was the first time we've ever, like, stayed at a studio while we were recording. It's always been, like, um... Go in during the day and you head home. Right. Yeah, yeah we would go, like, 20 minutes away from our house to a different studio and, um... You know, we'd go and then we'd leave for a week and then we'd go and then we'd leave for another week. So it's, like, it was cool to just be there for, like, six straight days and just have... Yeah. The total mindset while we were there just yeah. be you go to bed the in the zone and you game. wake up in the zone exactly yeah, yeah. absolutely crush seven songs <clears throat> in a few days instead yeah. of having to go back and forth i think when we tracked they were full length it took us like three months to do yeah so and, and there were there were gaps in between tracking sessions of leg dance like a week or two weeks so the fact that we were able to just get together everything was still fresh every morning we didn't have to go back and re-listen to stuff like remember it uh, I think that definitely helped us make a better record than anything else we've ever done. Yeah, absolutely. There's no time to like you know kind of kind of get out of your element or anything like that. You stayed in yeah, it for we, pretty from, consistent from like, time. Probably like eleven a.m. to like seven or eight p.m. every day. We're just straight, just like hitting the grind, and then absolutely. Take, take like a lunch break every day. Sure. Which also Adam has the best taste in like fast food that anyone. Ever <laughs> Bay Bayonne, yeah. New Jersey has some serious food spots. Mm, yeah, just about every day we were in the studio, we just had a crazy feast. Yeah. And, yeah, we'd track for like an hour and he'd be like, all right, what you guys want to get for lunch? <laughs> he seems very fun. I don't know if y'all yeah, saw... Yeah. Um, that, that was great. Yeah. Did y'all... Did y'all? I don't know if you know... Um, there's this dude named Jake Smith that was filling in for a conveyor on bass not too long ago when they were out with Gatherers. Okay. And <laughs> uh, Jake and Adam formed such... A strong bond and friendship that they made a joint Instagram account called Jake and Adam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's the funniest it's thing. Sort of not yeah, no. Well. Anyone, anyone hearing this <laughs> that wants to check that out and see what true, true bromance at first sight is, yeah. definitely yeah. check that out. Yeah, it's adorable, it was, dude. And Adam also has like the sickest dog too. Like the dog. Yeah, Adam yeah. the dog Bowser. Shout out to Bowser. 
But, uh, Shouts to Bowser. <laughs> yeah, no, you're just both chilling like the studio for a few days, so keeping keeping spirits up. Um, did did he like did he or you guys consider maybe bringing Bowser in for some guest vocals on track? He told us uh, the first day. He's like, yeah, Bowser's on every record, whether it's him like walking around in the background or whatever. He's like, I don't really know how he does it, but every so, record I, mean, I find some of Bowser on. He, there. he you guys, might be, so he might be walking around. He's deep in there. Yeah, you guys aren't really, uh, you guys aren't really in the right genre to have him go arf arf or anything like that. <laughs> no. So maybe him playing with a ball in the background. Yeah. Um. So you guys do pretty much identify as pop punk band. Is that something that you guys had um set? as a, a vision for the for the band sound stylistically um from the get-go y'all been together for a few years now so is that right. something that kind of just happened organically or did you, you know did you do it on purpose so you're like oh let's start a pop punk band well uh yeah i mean do you want to kind of um i mean i guess i we didn't really I like start so. the band as as with the intention of starting a pop punk band i kind of started it as like a punk band with uh with um, my buddies from from high school, and it just kind of turned into this thing. But uh, as we got older, we started to listen to more pop punk music, and I guess that would just, you know, as our taste grew, that's just what it kind of turned into. Yeah, I think yeah, I wouldn't even consider us like a. We like are a pop punk band, but I mean, like whenever we play shows, people say to us like. You guys have that pop punk thing, but you're not doing what everyone else is doing because we have that extra that, like pop yeah, rock vibe. That's one thing I was that gonna rock and roll vibe. Yeah, that was one thing I was gonna bring up is y'all remind me a little bit more of, of uh, pop punk bands you would have heard, um, you know, on like drive through records in like the late '90s, early 2000s. Right. Um, you know, the I guess what people call the golden age yeah, of yeah. pop punk. Cool. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's not it's not yeah it's yeah, not that, a that's a little refreshing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, y'all need to know that it's not a it's not a very generic thing that I hear. You guys got something fresh. You got cool. vibrant. Um, it's it's bouncy. It's fun. And I know? think we also come from very different, like not very different, but different musical backgrounds. Like when I I joined the band like a couple months in, and um when I joined it was like a punk band. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Andrew had like a two foot tall mohawk. And, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I'm gonna have to get pictures of that later. <laughs> I mean, uh, get them to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I, I listen to like mostly just like strictly like newer pop punk bands. Like I don't know, you can judge me if you want, but <laughs> I mean, it, into, you're you're so. honest with it. You know what I mean? You're not hiding what you like. So. But uh, yeah, so I feel like it just kind of evolved with how each of our tastes evolved, and we show each other different bands that we end up liking or disliking, and I feel like that just reflects itself in the music. Sure. So, um, you guys share vocal duties pretty evenly, do you think? Um, I think, like, me just a little bit heavier, just because I write most of the parts. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I would consider myself the lead vocalist, but he definitely does a hefty amount of, vo- of vocals. Yeah. And it wasn't always that way. But... Yeah, no, it didn't used to be. Yeah. It, was, and, like, it was up until like, this record, right? Like, most, of really, the, um, yeah. most of the vocal parts that I sing is, like, things that I wrote. Sometimes we, like, right. help each other out with parts and whatever, but it's yeah, like, sure. if you hear Andrew singing, he wrote that vocal part. If you hear mm-hmm. me singing, I probably wrote So you keep part. it personal to your to yourselves, yeah. um, your, your own contributions. And that's song. what I like about the songs, because it's like, we can have different themes, like, intertwined in the songs. Yeah. And it's based on, like, different, you know, we have different ideas of what the content of the song could be. Have y'all taken Have y'all taken lyrics from two totally different topics that you've written separately and just kind of thrown them together in the same song yeah, before? Kind of, yeah. Empty shoes, A right? lot of times. That's, yeah. that's cool how that kind of works out. I was like, I don't like that, yeah. too. I think yeah, Someone we, Like Me was also like that, right? A little bit. <coughs> yeah, actually. Kind of totally. Awesome, awesome. So, um, this is, I mean, this has been a long time coming for you guys. I mean, you're dropping it here this month uh, in January, and your last full Friday, release. Friday, right? Yeah, I think so. Coming up in a few days. Goes up, I don't know when this is going up, but the stream goes up on Substream today, so. Um, this probably won't be up for a few days okay. um, from now, maybe a little later. Um, maybe the Substream stream will still be up. Is Hopefully, it going to be a yeah, one-day thing? It goes up in half an hour. Oh, shit. Nice. Well, I've, I mean, I've listened to the two tracks that y'all put up uh, off it on Bandcamp. Um, I'm digging it, you know, personally. Cool. Um, y'all's last full release was in September of 2014, yeah. and y'all put a single out, was it in 2015 or was the it early 16? It was a year ago. I think almost exactly a year January ago. of last year. Yeah. And then, uh And then you dropped a single uh, called Damage off of the new record uh, back in November. Yep. 
has this, you know, has this been a lot of anticipation uh, in the in the works for you guys? You guys have been just like eager to get it out there. You have yeah. people asking you what's up. Yeah, hundred percent. It's like we've it. We spent a lot of time <coughs> like getting ready to write this record because we were saying like two summers ago we were going to write a new record, but then we just had like different. We had tours come up, and then we had different like festivals come up and stuff like that that we just ended up being like busy and we didn't get around to writing so getting around to actually writing this release took a while and then um we tracked this in june and it was done like by july totally mix and mastered so uh but we wanted this release to really like we wanted to put as much as we could into the release of morale because it was such a long time coming and some people have been like waiting for it absolutely so um wanted to put out your best work exactly and just everything, like the artwork, the packaging, the merch to go along with it. We just wanted like total, the highest quality that we could have done right now. And I think we really got that. So I'm really excited for it to be out. I think also like from like early 2015 until like we started tracking, it was a lot of like building for us too. Because it was like, we, we, we had a member change. We, we were a five piece and now it's just the four of us. And then... um. I feel like our our style from better off to now has changed because that was that was a really like like modern pop punk heavy record like a lot of stuff that we're not like it, there's, there's not that many fast parts on this record like there is on better off and mm-hmm. there's like a there's like a breakdown in better off and there's no breakdowns on this record unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> yeah, unfortunately no but is, 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 is that unanimous that no having not having a breakdown is is unfortunate no no, <laughs> no, 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 yeah, no. no but it's been like a big it, it, it's been like a year and a half of just like building us up as like a band j- j- just to be sure. better and try and differentiate ourselves from all the other bands that we're like playing with. Now, um, how, I mean, other than the, other than the member change with the member leaving, um, how long has this, has this lineup been consistent and solidified? I know you mentioned, um, you mentioned Andrew that you started it with high school friends. So I'm yeah. guessing that's, uh, that's not inclusive of these current guys. company. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we all went to high school together. Oh, yeah, sick. I, I've yeah, known all these guys for yeah, a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Here you and, and Austin yeah. have always been in the band forever. And then Dan joined very shortly after that. Dan played guitar, guitar too. Dan, Dan played guitar, too. yeah. Yeah. And Austin and I used plays to bass. Play bass. Oh, really? Yeah. And then when we had uh, our old guitar player leave, um, we were trying to figure out who was going to play lead. So I was the one who learned them, and we just did the switch. Okay. The old and Texas worked, switch. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was gonna. I was gonna ask if there was any. Uh, if there was any specific artist or band that inspired you uh, to want to do bass and vocals at the same time, because I feel like that's a lot less common yeah. than it is for guitar um, yeah. and vocals. I mean, uh, Blink One Eighty Two was like a huge band, of course, for me growing up. Oh. And uh, the first instrument I ever bought for myself was a Mark Hoppus bass. That's very pop model. punk of you. I know. <laughs> Uh, I don't get to play Your name's anymore, Dan, but... too. I feel like you belong in the pop-punk band. There's <laughs> yeah. so many pop-punk Dans. Here I am, dude. Pop-punk but, um... Dan and a pop-punk band, hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, like... <laughs> <laughs> the first the first instrument I ever bought was a Mark Hoppus bass. First song I learned how to play on bass was, like, Reckless Abandon. So it's just <laughs> stuff like that I've always, you know... I don't know. Yeah. I, know what... I used to play drums, and I always wanted to be more of, like, an active member on stage. Right. So, um... So yeah, you're you a jack know. of all trades at this point. Might as well be, honestly. Yeah, I'm like average at all trades. Are you gonna take <laughs> up? Are you gonna Are you gonna take up violin or anything like that anytime <laughs> soon? Yeah, I want to join Yellow Card if they ever get back together. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. It's funny you mentioned Reckless Abandon. Has anyone ever listened to that song with um? I I forget if it's the left or the right, but just the intro with the left or the right earphone in. What is it? Just the vocals? It's no. It's uh, you got the vocal track of Tom DeLonge singing on and on "Reckless Abandon," right. and then on the other side, in the background, it's just studio banter. You can hear you can yeah you can hear Mark like fucking around back there. He's like he's telling some sort of story. You can oh, really? tell he's like yeah he's telling a story and imitating someone. He's like, blah blah Chuck. Oh, more coppers, so. Huh? And it just, it's, yeah, that. you gotta, like, as soon as, as soon as we're done with this, you gotta check it out. Yeah, just plug in, uh, I'm, I'm sure I've got it on this here computer. You That's can plug so in the headphones and just, like, listen to one side, and it's hilarious. I've never heard that before. I noticed it in middle school, uh, cause I, I, I would listen to, to music with one earphone in. Right. And that song happened, and I heard that going on, but I didn't hear any music. And then... <laughs> 
reckless abandon, you know, the, where it jumps in, yeah, it yeah. started. And I'm like, that was weird. And I put in both and I realized what song it was That's really and I switched that. back. And yeah, it was, it was a very weird thing. <coughs> to hear. I love when bands put little like funny things into the song. Oh, absolutely. Like, I live for that shit at like the end of a record. Where people will, Dude, will just be fucking around. Have you in the listened studio. to the end of uh, "Burning at Both Ends" by by Set Your Goals? The last song is Not... like seventeen minutes. the The song itself is like three minutes. Then there's like maybe twelve of just silence, and then there's like a rap song at the end end of the record. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it's like a really short rap song, but it's like I'm pretty. Sure I feel like I have heard Goals that. Rapping, yeah. Kind of reminds me of like "All by Myself" on Dookie. By Green Day. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I feel like uh, I feel like that's, there, that's I feel like there have been a lot of bands do. doing that lately. Newfound Glory did it. Yeah, Newfound Glory's done it a few a times. I know. Uh, I know. It, I, one favorite of mine um, is "I Remember" by A Day to Remember because oh, yeah. the song fades out they, they and then it's them Aver- sitting around. They like, talk about Avenue Villains. Like when that record came out, every single one of my friends from Massapequa who like it did it. I'm like. Dude, you have to listen. They talk about Avenue Villains. Yeah, I know. I've heard it already. Oh, he's talking about that little kid that uh that that sa- yeah, yeah that yeah, says yeah. I'm walking here in the pizza yeah. shop. Yeah, it's yeah, so that, funny because that Amityville, that's like our hometown venue that they're talking about. Yeah, so they yeah it's the venue we play at all the fucking time. Our record release there is like in like in like a week and a half. Mm-hmm. So that's that was so funny to me because I was like shit. Like, I'm, I it, it got me thinking like just seeing a day to remember like at that venue that I'm always at just like exactly any I mean any band could you know be playing you know any tiny dinky ass venues in any they, town and they just... shouted that out when I saw a day to remember with rise against like a few years ago they shouted I went to that tour in Poughkeepsie it. actually where is it in Poughkeepsie um I think it was at the Ford Civic Center uh um, it was them, uh, Rise Against, and the Menzingers. Yeah, the Menzingers. Mm, yeah. Our dude had Glassjaw on it, too. Oh, that's um, neat. Yeah, no. Um, I would have killed they, this Glassjaw. They, they shouted it out at Amityville, and everyone was like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, we used to play there back in the day in 2005 or six or whatever. Well, maybe a few years down the road, you know, kids will be <laughs> listening to makeshift records and be like yo those guys used to play down the road at the venue and now they're big rock stars <laughs> those guys used to bother me I want them to acknowledge me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we still have to sell pre-sales <laughs> yeah sell so pre-sales to play the Nassau Coliseum <laughs> <laughs> like yeah you can you can play this we set you up a good show but you gotta sell 250 <laughs> 250 <laughs> pre-sales one of, one of my old bands got like I, I think like the whole pre-sale thing is like it's like not a I don't know I don't like a lot of it's people not a, it's not as big a deal as people make it I know it a lot of people hate it I don't think it's a big yeah. deal the, the only time I've gotten like an insane pre-sale offer which we actually we like turned down and I think it was a bad a bad idea but um my old Ben got like a hundred ticket pre-sale to open for, for uh, Bring Me the Horizon I think it was and we told them no I feel like you could have found a hundred people willing to buy Bring Me the Horizon tickets yeah <laughs> you could have been like uh, you could have just walked into Hot Topic every day for two weeks <laughs> straight and been like hey do you want to buy a Bring Me the Horizon ticket <laughs> I gotta ask my dad hey dad do you want to buy a Bring Me the Horizon ticket <laughs> Yeah, this is this is before San Paterno, though, right? Yeah, obviously. Oh yeah, so I, I, maybe maybe they wouldn't have been as well known. Like, that could have uh, been kind of cool. Like they were still bumping warp tours across the country. Well, do I mean though. back uh, back on Long Island where you guys are from? Do you uh, do you feel like people make pay to play a, a big deal? Because I mean. I, I feel like pay to play and selling pre sales are often used as interchangeable terms. And they're not. But they're not. They're not no, not, not by thing. any means. We have never, we've never been on a pay to play show. Like when we sell pre sale, the promoter's using it to get people out to the show. So yeah, you're just, you're just helping out and pulling band. a little it's weight. Like, yeah, it's not like. Wrong with getting more people to watch. It's, it's not like, like you that. being able to play depends on you selling 15 tickets. Right, exactly. You're just doing it to help out. And it's like, when, and that's because bigger bands are either from the area or they're touring in the area and like we're on tour right now we're in georgia we're playing shows up and down the east coast like we want kids at those shows too you know what mm-hmm. i mean so we appreciate the local selling tickets if they have to do that because it, that's helping you guys out because right. you're not a touring band playing to no one in the end mm-hmm. it helps us get money in for the gas tank and it like they get a better show out of it everybody wins right right and more people just hear our music which is why we're doing this sure. thing you know you mentioned uh, you mentioned that you're on tour. Uh, this is the morale record release tour that you guys are on. Yeah. You guys hung out in Orlando all day yesterday. You had a show fall through. 
and so you went to Disney World. Hell yeah. Yes. Which yeah. is Not the right way to deal with, with a surprise day off. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so is this the furthest you guys have toured away from home? I know you guys have toured before, but I don't really know the extent of that. Uh, well, last year we went to Orlando, then we also went to Jacksonville, so that was the most south we've been at that point, but on this run we went to Margate, Florida. Yeah. It's kind of by, like, the West Palm Beach area. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this tour is the most south we've ever gone. It's more most south I've ever been personally in the country, so, um... Yeah, we're, um, we're right outside of Savannah in my bedroom (laughs) hunkered around my bed killing it yeah talking into a microphone Mm -hmm. um what do you guys what do you guys think of the south in general what are what are some things that you look forward to when you come down that aren't the billboards okay hold on (laughs) see like i've lived all over the country and i feel like i don't know i've never noticed any billboards specifically that jump out at me more in the south than they do up north it's not even like the 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 content of the because obviously it's like the big like religious one. Jesus saves. Some of the Jesus yeah. saves. Yeah. There's a billboard that just said Jesus. Yeah, there's a big yellow. Yeah, there was, was, yeah, was like, no like endorsement, okay, no company. They just nothing. that's it. Just Jesus. Just Jesus. Jesus yeah. what? Someone's paying for that. I don't know. It was two sided too. Yeah. Was what was on the other side? Jesus? Jesus. Yeah, it just said yeah, Jesus. Double Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Double Jesus. <laughs> we saw All one that said Bibles lowest prices too. Oh yeah, that was that was in Georgia because. There you got to be economically sure. conscious when buying your salvation, clearly. <laughs> no. God. Yeah, no. Those, those and, 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 like, nothing, you know, obviously we're not getting into religion. Or right, right, like that. Right, right. Nothing right. against Christian, but that seems like a big kind of goofy, pious billboard mm-hmm. to put up. Yeah. Or not, not non-pious. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, pompous, I guess. Uh, on the real, I look forward to the people in the South, because it's just so, like, different from where we're from. Sure. Definitely and a lot more manners down here. Everyone is so I've noticed there. that. Yeah, I, I've i lived up in New Hampshire. I've lived in New York, not too far from where you guys are from. I lived about an hour north of the city. You were in West Point, right? Uh, I, yeah, I lived on West Point for a couple of years. Cool. And uh, yeah, everyone up there seems to be really cool. mean. Yeah, really yeah. mean spirited. Yeah. 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 Like, I love Long Island. I love New York. I love being there. But it's just like, it's such a different culture down here. It's just mm. cool to get away and be like, I guess, absorbed in something. I don't know if that's the right word or not. No, yeah, but... it's. Yeah, you just kind of feel like enveloped yeah, into yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like it. Uh, I feel like, you know, and what with you know like, like political discourse and division and stuff like that. I feel like Southern hospitality has become a bit of a myth to people like you know not really, um, not really familiar with it. But I feel like it's definitely around for sure. Hundred oh, yeah. percent. Very Everyone welcoming. In these like middle states have been just nothing but cool to us. The the promoters, the kids who go to the shows, are all just like stoked to hang out and yeah. like hear new music. And like, everyone wants to shake your hand. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't get that as much in New York when you're like a new band. Like, mm-hmm. like some of the shows that are just all locals here, like definitely get better draws than all local shows on Long Island sometimes. So, and kids down here, I, I guess, smaller touring bands don't come through the area as much. There's not a lot of venues, because kids are like, oh yeah, we like drove like an hour for this show. We came like forty five minutes out of the way. And oh, it's that's like, nuts. And, um, along around there's like venues, like yeah, yeah. Scary. I know, uh, I know Savannah, because we're you know we're right outside Savannah. I, I know Savannah isn't too vibrant as far as the local scene goes. Um, I've heard that it was a lot more active a couple years ago, um, when I wasn't living in the area. Um, but from what I can tell, most of the most of the bigger tours and even the smaller tours hit up, you know, Atlanta or uh, Columbus or Augusta for Georgia, and then um, you know Jacksonville, which is about two hours south of us right. um, for for North Florida. Yeah, we, so we, a lot of kids Columbus. travel. I feel like. How was Columbus? Uh, it was fun. It was it was in this cool spot that this kid like actually bought. It was like looked like a building used for storage, and this kid just like bought it. And just throw the shows. In there. <laughs> sure, he's just like, you know what? Yeah, I'll take like this estate. building. Yeah, the estate. I'll take yeah. it. Uh, then you had dogs, which was cool. But no, it was dogs it was best. a really cool spot. It was it was sick to see some kid who was just like really cared about his scene, just go and like buy a building just to throw shows in. Like that's that that's awesome. That's absolutely cool. That's something that would never happen on Long Island either. So. It's is, are there a lot of things going on in other scenes that you don't that you don't see as much back home or that you wish you'd see more of? Um, I don't, I don't want to say support because we get a lot of support on Long Island, but like, um, 
we touched on this before. I feel like more people are just open to yeah. different music. So just here. just the mindset in general, right. kind of open mindedness and ex- acceptance and welcoming and stuff. Hundred like percent. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I feel like. Uh, Depending, you know, depending on situations and circumstances, that can be hard to come by or easy to come by. Yeah. Um. Anywhere. So, but it's. I mean, it's good that y'all been fortunate enough on this run. Yeah. Totally. Um. You got Christian Ivanko out with you. Chris, Christian Ivanko and company, I should say. Um, the lot lizards. What's that? The lot lizards. Lot the lot lizards. lizards. Yeah. I feel, yeah. yeah I've, I've, God stop. I've, I've, <laughs> I've heard yeah. that. Franco's. He's. I think there were one night. Yeah. yeah. I've heard yeah. that it's a I've heard that it's a running joke to come up with a uh, with good backing band names yeah. for the yeah, Christian band. So. <laughs> I know one that they were uh, they were really into was uh, Christian Evanko and the Lab Rats. Yeah, yeah, that was yesterday. Oh, yeah. Which I think is great because before y'all got here last night, I was brainstorming on some, and I thought Christian Evanko and the Big Cheese would be really good. <laughs> which I guess kind of ties in with Lab Rats because you know they're yeah. they're they're going after the Big Cheese. cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Avanko, the big cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a mob boss. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Chris Avanko. This is Buddy, the big cheese. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, y'all are big food fans, uh, from oh, what definitely. I've from what I've understood. Oh yeah. <laughs> what are uh, what are some spots that you've hit up so far on the run since you're far from home uh, that you don't typically get up north? Are there any that y'all are looking to try? I know that y'all are. Y'all are pretty keen on going to Waffle House after this podcast is yeah, over with. Waffle House. I don't know if you consider it a food, a food spot, but Wawa is huge. Uh, oh, yeah. Cookout. Oh, Wawa's in Jersey and Pennsylvania, right? Yeah, yeah we're going to yeah, hit those on the way back. They're too. a little more accessible. Um, cookout is a huge one for me personally. I just had Cookout for the first time when I moved into the area a few yeah, weeks ago. Really? And wow, phenomenal. Amazing. I'm right? a fan a of any value. place. It's good. Yeah, oh, absolutely. For your wallet. Can I finish? Can yeah, I no, no, go ahead. say? What? Any place you can get a chicken quesadilla on the side. No, I was going to say any place that I can have chicken nuggets as a side. Okay. Well, we'll but be, yeah, know, pretty close, so high five on that for sure. <laughs> yeah, the the sides that they offer is just ridiculous. Like, no one ever asks if you want a side of chicken nuggets. But the answer is always going to be fucking of course. Of course yes. Yeah. <laughs> the side yeah. of a full meal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Side of a chili cheese dog. Like, chili. <laughs> And you can get a shake with your meal, which is just outstanding. Yeah, yeah, and right. Usually, you know, like fifty flavors too. That's incredible. I usually go for the huge tea, but it's I don't, I don't know. The last I went, when I went with with friend, they got a they got the huge tea. Okay, that's incredible. Or a cheer wine float. Come to Long Island. Mm, we definitely don't have those. On yeah, Long we don't even have yeah, cheer wine on Long Island. cherry coke. I'm sure yeah. you could find it at, at stores or, no, or no something. The, uh, no, just no, in like, like in like bodegas and Queens. I'm about to say stuff, you could find you know the you could find a place that carries bodegas. smaller sodas. The closest state I've seen cheer wine being sold is in, was um in Pennsylvania, and that was when we were in Pittsburgh like last year. But other than that, it's at, at cookout or like anywhere from well, like Virginia down. It's cool that they have cheer wine and everything, but they also have Steelers fans. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not super big on football, so I can't really like relate to. I know I was talking to I was talking to Christian not too long ago about the Super Bowl hopes and Super Bowl turnouts. I don't know. Is anyone here keeping up with football right now? Next question. So yeah, sports ball. I know the Giants got knocked out. Thank I know the Jets God. suck. <laughs> uh, other than that, I'm not too keen on football. Yeah, I saw Chris with a yeah. with a Jets blanket earlier, and I, I was like, "Oh, I'm Browns so sorry." <laughs> You're like, "Nope." <laughs> I'm pretty sure the Browns still haven't won a game all season. Oh no, the Browns are the the Browns are in the playoffs right now for the Super Bowl. Are they? No. They're like oh and seventeen maybe. Like, I, close enough. Yeah, they won a game towards the end. God oh, bless them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Oh, that's funny. Um, so I mean, is is there anything is there anything in the works for you guys that you can talk about? Um, other than this, you know, other than this run that you're already, you know, already in the middle of. Um, I mean, we're just getting ready to put out this record. Mm-hmm. Other than that, we're going to try to keep touring. And, uh, wait, we all have some school to finish up, so it's touring's a little hard. But, um, yeah. How how old are all you guys? Me and Matt are 21, and Austin and Andrew are 20. Oh, okay. So, 
So yeah, y'all got a y'all got a couple years left of school. You're young boys, yeah. yeah. Them them boys. Yeah. Young bucks. Yeah. I think I think following this tour. Young bull living like an old geezer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the camera can't see them all just holding still right now. Because what do y'all? Uh, wait, well, that and that's a that's a good thing to talk about too. Is well, what do y'all listen to that's outside of the realm of alternative? And um, I, I feel like a lot of bands in the alternative scene when they're out on tour. All they listen to is the bigger stuff that everyone else yeah, is jamming. Yeah. I know Bad and Bougie is pretty big right now. We listen to a lot, honestly, in the van. And this is all from Chris, too, and I actually appreciate it. We listen to a lot of, like, classic rock. Like, like a lot yeah, of, like, yeah. Def Leppard and ACDC just jamming out in the van. Oh, man. A lot of metal, too. The other yeah, day... A lot, of, like, a lot of metal. The other day I heard Pour Some Sugar On Me by <laughs> Def Leppard. Yep. And Great song. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Twice, twice on the radio in one day, which is three times too many. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> no, we we all listen to pretty out there stuff. I mean, I know Austin likes Nas a lot. Yeah, I love my old school hip hop. Oh, that's what's yeah. up. Austin Austin likes Nas. Love I listen Nas, to Wu Tang. Uh, Wu Tang is great. Wu Tang. Yeah. What about you, Andrew? Um, outside the realm of alternative. I can't even think of anything, really. Surely one of you guys has been messing around with the new Childish Gambino record. Oh, totally. Which is incredible. It's it's so insane. good. It's not even a hip-hop album. No, it's just... It's like funk, it's rock and roll, written. soul. Yeah. yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> someone I, someone I saw compare it to like Parliament Funkadelic, and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, someone said the new Childish Gambino record is like Parliament Funkadelic in 2016. I was like, dude, no way. Like... <laughs> Um, I've been like, like, I'm, I'm, I'm selling out a little bit, but I have been listening to that new J. Cole record and it is, it is amazing. I know a lot of people are feeling J. Cole right it's now. So a lot good. of people are really into Chance the Rapper. Chance the Rapper is cool. I, I like just, Coloring Book. Yeah. Side note, I respect what that dude is doing so much because that dude is doing all this stuff and like is nominated for Grammys and is not signed to a label. Yeah, he refuses. That, that, <laughs> that's that's cool so thing. sick to me. He just used the internet as such like, like such a thing to like build his hype on to where he mm-hmm. doesn't even need a label anymore and he just mm-hmm. pocket everything from it and mm-hmm. he just he puts out what he wants it's a way to live yeah it's it, no him, rules him <laughs> uh, yeah no J. Cole Chance the Rapper I think a bunch of us are jamming 21 Pilots right now right I don't know if that's outside the realm of alternative that's kind of it, like, kind earlier of right in the realm of alternative yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's like <laughs> just it's telling like the line right now, I, feel like, uh, I don't know I, I, I can't I go anywhere that. without hearing it on the radio that's what I mean I mean I don't I don't hate it by any means but it does wear really down on you a little <laughs> yeah no I, I, I love that band a lot because they them too they're, they're doing something that's so like Unique, something un- uncommon. Like, like you can't put a genre on that band because this, that, oh, that, you watch that blow your face record <laughs> is like fourteen tracks and You'll like, and the same record it has like two rap songs, like a kind of heavy song, and like two just straight up ukulele jams on it. Like, mm. it's. Can I expect any uh, makeshift ukulele jams in the future? I Absolutely not. not, <laughs> not future. That's three. Hold on. Do I heard three yeses and an absolutely not? <laughs> I quit. <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> he also said that when we first started talking about being a pop punk band, though. So you never know. Yeah, also, yeah look uh, at you. You cut, mohawk, you cut your mohawk, you poser. You cut his mohawk and everything changed. <laughs> so out over here. <laughs> Pose in hell, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm so sorry, I'm the punks. <laughs> I'm up the boots and the mohawk for, for some You're wearing an things. Alkaline Trio shirt, so, I mean, they're they're basically pop punk. I guess. <coughs> yeah. I guess. They're more on the punk side of pop punk, though. That's the yeah, kind yeah. of, like, From Here to Infirmary movie. was an absolutely incredible album. I still... I not a bad track on that. Still jam Stupid Kids, still jam Private Eye. Hell yeah. Awesome stuff. Um... So what's it what's it like being out with uh with Chris and all them? Do y'all know them pretty well, or did y'all just kind of link up uh, for the tour just because it you know it made sense? Y'all are touring around the same time. Uh, well, I know Matt's known Chris the longest out of all of us just because of bands they used to play in. Uh, I met Chris through Matt a couple of years ago, and we just you know we've been friendly. And whenever he came to Long Island, we would chill. Whenever we went up to Poughkeepsie, he would chill, and it just you know it felt right to be going out with. Uh, a good friend. I feel like we're also very new to touring. Sure. In uh, makeshift. 
So it's cool to be out with a good friend who is more experienced in touring than us, so we can kind of, like, rely on each other, and it's more of, like, a team than uh, two different bands. Like, we're traveling together, we're sharing a van, we're doing all this stuff together, mm-hmm. and it's it's been awesome. And now y'all can't get rid of each other. Yeah. <laughs> now I can never get away from that. <laughs> so, uh, you got a, f- a photographer... Uh, slash band mom out with you guys right now. Is that something that y'all y'all typically would be doing? Uh yeah. <coughs> well having the having photos from every date is huge just for Absolutely. like content on social media mm-hmm. and all that. Just Don't want to be posting people... the same tour flyer every day. Right, right. Just like keep people engaged. Um and it's always awesome having like a mind on the tour that's outside of either band. So mm-hmm. it's like you know, they're looking out for what's best. Outside looking in. Right, exactly. Awesome. So, yeah. All right. Um, had a couple funny, goofy, silly questions we saved for the end. <laughs> sure. Right. So, in the event of a worldwide apocalypse involving zombies, aliens, robots, monsters, the whole nine yards, the whole shebang, who do you guys see as most fit and most likely to help rebuild and restructure humanity and lead the fight to become what we once were. In the band? Uh, No, not... I mean, if you want to pick someone in the band, I'm just... uh, Any human in general. Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo. (laughs) Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo. Good idea. Austin, Austin from Chris's band said that last night. You're garbage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, he is in a couple Slayer music videos, so there's that. Have you seen that new Slayer video? It's intense. It's insane. It was uh the it was the first single they dropped off that album, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was definitely intense. His uh his acting in in gory horror movies definitely came out pretty yeah. well on that one. So okay, from Matt we have Danny Trejo. Uh, I'm gonna go with a band member. I'm gonna say Andrew. Andrew, like Andrew's gonna lead the fight. I no, because I feel humans like, against robots and aliens. I feel like he is most well set out of all of us to fight a bunch of aliens and zombies and stuff. I could see him at, with like a Sparta costume on. Motherfucker! He's doing it already. All right, Andrew. Now, now you have to say Dan. Uh, you don't have to. no, <laughs> but you should. Dan's a nice guy. He wasn't he wasn't <coughs> anybody. You hear that, Dan? You're a nice guy. Nice Just man. Good job. Yeah. Just every day, every day he turns around and he's like, Matt, I'm gonna fucking kill you. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> you just see it in his eyes. I say it in my head. <laughs> I'll say it out. You say it in your head yeah. and sometimes other people hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew? Who would I want to lead this world? What's left of it? I mean, we're most of the human race has been wiped out at this point. So we're talking a you know a small band of a few hundred, maybe a few thousand survivors. Oh god damn! I know yeah. they're leading a That's small army. Shit. Seriously, I don't know. And I like this isn't just an interview question. I ask this question to people in everyday life. You know what I mean? Like you can learn a lot about someone just yeah. by their answer to this. Who would they trust with the future of the human race? I don't know. I can't even think of anybody. <laughs> Well, I uh, have a, we'll get to we'll get to Stan we'll get to Stan and then we'll come back to you. Okay. All right. All right. I know exactly who I'm gonna pick. Oh, okay. We go with our band mom, Danny. Because if Danny. she's holding this tour together, she could definitely hold the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for her to hear that. She's gonna be so proud. <laughs> yeah. She's really she's doing it right. All her goals. <laughs> and she, uh, uh, how uh, how instrumental has she been for you guys with the success oh, of this she's tour? She's been scheduling everything. She's got us on pretty tight leash so far. So basically, yeah. a TM. Is yeah, she's tour essentially. Managing for you guys. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know she was giving you guys time frames and, and schedules and stuff like that. She yep. manages your Instagram account mm-hmm. um, every single day. So if anyone listening out there goes and, and peruses <clears throat> the the Instagram account, they're looking at the hard work of Danny. It's mostly me and her. Yeah, it's mostly yeah. Dan and Danny. Yeah, <laughs> Dan and Danny. <laughs> Regular dynamic duo. <laughs> All right, Andrew. Mm. Time to pay the piper. Thank you. I don't know. I'm going with Liam Neeson. Oh, absolutely. Good answer. <laughs> that that's, that's shouldn't have part. taken you that long if that was your answer. <laughs> I feel like the first thing out of your mouth would have been like, oh, my turn, Liam Neeson. Like, <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's like the best answer. That you yeah. I feel, okay, so now let's make this interesting. A four-way fight to the death for position of power in the human race's 
fight to rebuild and restructure. It's Danny, <laughs> Andrew, Danny Trejo, and Liam Neeson. You kind of just pitted yourself against Liam Neeson, honestly. Yeah. So who's walking away from this alive? Probably Danny Trejo. <laughs> <laughs> If he has a machine, I don't know. Liam Neeson Neeson has a very particular set of skills. (laughs) (laughs) It's one of those two. (laughs) You don't. You don't. You don't got confidence in Danny. You don't think she could hold her own against Danny Trejo? Oh, probably. She could definitely. Oh, that, I mean, that's Danny. Me. That's Danny v. Danny. You know. Danny yeah. is gonna kill me immediately. Which she one? Knows. She or he? Da- da- she. <laughs> There's two Dannys. You gotta specify. Sorry, Andrew. You're going first. <laughs> Oh man! All right, well, uh, we're probably gonna be closing up here pretty soon. Is there anything that you guys wanted to plug? Uh, anything that you guys wanted to talk about before heading out? Uh, we have a new record coming out on January thirteenth. It's called Morale. This it, might this might be put up past the thirteenth. Okay, That's so fine. it could it could be out so already. We have a new yeah. record out. It came out on January thirteenth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it just went up for stream on Substream. You can stream it there. Uh, we have. Different packages for it on our Bandcamp page. Um, we got a couple dates left of tour. If you're on Long Island, you can check us out at the release show on January 20th at Amityville Music Hall. You know, Twitter, Instagram at makeshift underscore li, facebook.com. Yeah, I'll probably, probably put on links and stuff like that when they put up the podcast. Cool. I don't know. Oh, shit. That's, Andrew? That's probably it, right? You look like you had something to say, something oh, something I, weighing I weighing heavy on your mind, my friend. No. <laughs> <laughs> Stin? Uh, I think Dan pretty much covered it all. Awesome. I usually do. Yeah. <laughs> Dan the man. Hey oh. <coughs> uh, what what Dan said? Yeah. yeah. New, new yeah. record. Um, new record. Excited the new to finish show. out the rest of this tour. Like all all the shows are looking sick, so. Yeah, awesome. thanks, thanks for having us on the podcast. Thanks yeah, for letting us crash. Yeah, 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 no, absolutely, absolutely. It's been, <laughs> it's been fun. It's been fun hanging we're out. We're going to one band at a time. <laughs> <laughs> we're probably going to uh, go grab some Waffle House. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or, or or cook out if, if Dan's getting his way and he you know he wants his chicken I'm always for his side. Cook out breakfast, lunch, and dinner when you're in the South, man. That's <laughs> all it is. Cook out three times a day. <laughs> is there a cookout near here? Like, uh, there's a cookout up the street, I believe. I think that concludes the podcast, honestly, yeah. now that Matt knows there's a cookout up the That's street. Yeah. Okay. He's, he's already out the door. Yeah. <laughs> there goes out. Matt. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right, well, this has been Behind the Barricade. Thanks for listening. Uh, check out Makeshift. Uh, support them on their upcoming tours or upcoming endeavors. Check out the new record. All right, take care.